what is up everybody welcome back to the channel i heard you guys in the comments you guys like these wiring videos i don't know why i mean i like wiring but i'm sure you guys probably is a headache for you guys so i kind of got to button up the wiring on this thing now there's i would say the car is about maybe 85 percent of the wiring complete but all the heavy lifting is done so i'm going to walk you kind of through what i did uh, obviously every car is slightly different there's a lot of variables. Uh, you run an AC or you run in uh, vintage air, which is AC, but um, electric fans. Um, are you doing American Auto Wire, Ron Francis? Like, what are you guys doing? Dakota Digital. So you guys saw in that video what we did with the dash. And I'm going to show you what we did on the actually inside of the car behind towards the firewall and everything. It is, it's an organized mess right now. And this video is about kind of Getting everything laced in, I want to show you guys the harness on kind of how I routed everything. Let's get into it. All right, you guys. So we are at the engine bay, and the biggest one I wanted to kind of take care of is the engine bay because I need to start putting some stuff in as far as the radiator goes, lines, hoses, all that good stuff, all the accessories, of course. Obviously, we have the engine harness for the most part laced in, which is PSI. We kind of got it all dressed up for the most part where everything is going to live with the exceptions of the cold air intake and maybe one or two other plugs. But we got our starter also wired in for power down here. If you guys look, let me see if I can get a better shot for you guys. But um, we kind of went ahead and got the power already ran to the breaker. Now, I really like these breakers, you guys. These breakers come from American Auto Wire. They usually include them. In any updated kit, um, whether you're doing a stock classic update kit, or in this case, it's the 22 Highway 22 series, which really you have to wire everything from scratch. I'll get into that. I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But we basically got our power distribution slash breaker there. And then we got our main one here. I, um, you could do this in so many different ways. Um, here we have one going directly to the starter, one going to the alternator to charge the alternator, of course. And this third one that's not done yet, that'll go directly to the battery. And this will actually provide the power for the entire circuit. So this will go directly to the battery. Once we have our battery here, we can uh, basically wire that in. But that's kind of the battery. We still have to do all the grounds for the motor. We haven't done any of the grounds for the motor yet other than the ground for the actual LS harness, which is obviously on the back cylinder head. But that's done. But what I want to show you is kind of how we went about all the wiring for the headlights and everything up front. If you guys can see, let's see if I can get a, a good video here. Now, we went ahead and had to make all these connections by, from scratch. They basically, with that harness, they give you a, is that better? No, nope, that's my hand. But they give you basically enough wire and you have to really use all your old um, connectors. So they do give you two new headlight connectors. But um, as far as like the turn signals and things like that, you got to use your old ones or buy new ones. We have the turn signal right there in the back. Everything wired up and we ended up having to use that old turn signal from the original factory harness along with the parking light down there but you can see all the wiring harness follows along this radiator core support this is really hard you guys to kind of get this on video but let me see if i can get you guys a better shot all right you guys i went and could and closed the garage door because we were getting a lot of light that was just blinding us creating a glare that's a better look right there so right now we kind of just have everything zip tied and velcroed just to make sure we got our lengths correctly. And that way we can go back and lace everything. But that is a good picture right there. You can see we got it coming all the way to the other side over there. Now, over here, we obviously had a few drop points. We have our horn. The wiring for the horn is there, along with the wiring for the actual trinary switch slash vintage air. And then not to mention our uh, fan that we're going to end up running for our auxiliary transmission cooler as well let me show you on that side here this is going to be our main power we did a quick connector here that's going to be the power for the actual auxiliary fan up front it's going to mount in this area over here 
We took it off. We already mocked it in, but we took it off because I'm going to send it out for powder coating all the brackets on it so everything matches nice and black, clean. But what we also did, if you look here, this is our fan relay setup. Now, I made this little bracket here, and I actually just used the same hole that mounts this, <clears throat> excuse me, I used the same hole that mounts this basically core support bracket from the frame and then made a nice little clean bracket. We're probably gonna send it out, take this all off, send it out and get powder coated. But um, really somewhere to mount those relays because the relays you always want for your fans to sit somewhere close by the fan. Just because the, the fans, I mean, those fans pull a lot of amps and the closer you can have that power source to those fans, the better you're going to be. So always put your auxiliary fan relays, always put them close by to your actual radiator slash fans. So that's why I always have them live in this area here. I don't like them having them lit underneath the dash because that's a little too far of a run. With the amps that you're pulling, you definitely don't want to do that. But these um, particular relays came with the kit for the Griffin kit from the radiator. Great kit, great relays. So we got um, our ground post kind of right in this area here for the fans themselves. Then we have our power that comes off there and is basically going to live right here. Now, I did have to pull these. These come with the kit as well. But I had to depin them. You got to take the pins off and then recrimp new pins on. If you don't have that, if you don't have the pins, you can't do that, obviously. But we got a bunch of different pins and, and connectors and stuff like that. So they'll live kind of right there. We have already mocked it in, guys. I already had the radiator in here mocked in. But it'll kind of go underneath here and then come up here, obviously, to our relays. But on your relays, are, you always have a trigger wire that, in this case, it's the gray wire. And that's the gray wire there that's going to act as your trigger. And that's the wire that you're going to end up connecting to, or I should say from the GM PSI harness ECU. So you usually have a blue and a green wire, and that's why you'll connect those one for each. Basically, the computer will tell the fans, hey, this temperature ECU sees it at 185 now, at 195, whatever it's set to. It'll tell those relays to kick on accordingly, but you'll also end up using that to tie into your trinary switch. Now, one other thing, you guys, if I can give you guys a tip when you guys are wiring these things up, grounds is probably one of the most things I always see that's an issue with wiring. Now here, we got a nice good ground here to the actual um, core support, but before you guys stick these on and you think you got a good ground, Always take some sandpaper or some kind of sanding disc and just grind away the paint or powder coat in that area so that way you get a nice, clean, good surface to actually ground to. I always see that being an issue if you have paint or powder coat. People just think because you're hooked up to the metal, it's going to ground, and that's usually not the case. But here, we came to our headlights. Obviously, we got our headlights here. We got the actual turn signals here. Again, we had to reuse these guys here. and But we did a nice little clean splice with some heat shrink tube. Um, nothing wrong with that, you guys. Just make sure you keep it to a minimal. That's why we only did in certain areas. I mean, the, the least amount of break slash um, stuff like that you can do, it's always better because further down the road, the last thing you want to do is chase these uh, electrical gremlins. But if you look up here, what we did, we um, we obviously ran power and we also ran the accessory power for the fan relays, but also we have our fuses kind of tucked away right here. So here, these are your fuse relays, or I should say fuses for your relays slash fans. So we, I like to always tuck them up right here on the underneath of this um, basically core support so that you can still get to them and they're still close by the, your relays and they're accessible. I mean, to me, always serviceability is, is my main goal when it comes to these cars. If you can't service it, what's the point? So we're gonna, those are gonna live there. It comes back around and we have a nice clean connection here. This guy right there, we did a nice clean connector. So this actually is, you got your power coming in and then your 
two powers leaving, one for each fan relay. But if you look here, we have a nice little pigtail, and you got the one 12 gauge power basically coming in with the clean connector, and then it branches out to the two uh, prong connector, and that'll feed our relays. Um, same thing we did with the accessory power. You got to have an accessory power for these relays as well. We did the same thing up here. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. There we go. We did the same thing there. We have a nice clean, basically, ignition power coming in one, and then we split it into two right there with the nice clean uh, quick connect breaker right there. You can break that off and then connect your auxiliary power for your relays. So I really try to put a connector on everything as much as possible, but of course you're always gonna have those situations where either they're not needed or you don't even need them. Um, let me show you some more underneath. If I can get out of this corner of this car. Sorry about the glare, you guys. It's definitely hard. You got that sun coming in through the garage, but here, of course, we got a nice couple clamps. We got another clamp down there holding the wires in place before we kind of lace everything in with the wire loom. But we got another one there kind of holding everything up because last thing we want to do is have any of these wires pinched when we go to put the inner fender on. And then we come here, we got another one there. But now, if you look, they actually are all just coiled up right here, you guys. So we have basically our bolt connector. This is not your normal factory bolt connector. We did something custom with this because I wanted to pin them on my own just because the 22 highway circuit from American Auto Wire, again, they give you all these wires that you gotta cut to length and you gotta terminate and pin on your own. So we did a nice uh, custom connector. We're gonna probably do that in this video. And that'll live, basically all these wires will end up talking to all the wires on the inside of the dash. Let me take you there now. Oh yeah, our organized mess, you guys. This thing is a lot of work. It has been a lot of work. It's super tedious. That's why I haven't really recorded anything. We got our steering column mocked up. This is a brand new I did it steering column. That thing's gonna be sweet because it's got the tilt now and it gets rid of that ugly lever, shift lever that it had from day one here. But you can see this thing is a lot going on in this dashboard. So what my goal was with this dash slash wiring was to be able to put that dash and put it in and not have any wires basically having to, so to speak, hold while you're trying to put the dash in, you know what I mean? Trying to like simultaneously hold the dash and the wires together. So we put quick disconnects on everything. So when you put this dash on, everything will obviously have a quick connector. That's just your headlights, of course. But this guy right here, that's for our Dakota Digital. So just one quick connector for the Dakota Digital. That was really the goal. Obviously, we got to kind of kind of lace this up a little bit. We're actually gonna leave it raw for the most part so we can see everything, see what's going on. But we'll put some tape here and there. Um, a trick I like to use quite a bit, you guys, is Velcro. Velcro is your best friend when it comes to wiring these cars. You can put it on and then take it off as you need it, as you need to add more wires. Definitely Velcro for the win, for sure. So we also had to lace in the PSI, of course, we did that. You guys saw that in the last video. But obviously, Vintage Air is back there. Maybe we'll do a Vintage Air wiring uh, video next after this one. Kind of just show you more in detail of that. But we also had to do our courtesy lights because this car did, was missing all the courtesy lights. So we added the courtesy lights underneath the dash. And then we got them coming all the way over. And then also on this side here. So that'll live underneath the dash. But we had to tie all the courtesy lights in. Now the nice part about it is the Highway 22 kit definitely has a spot for that. They call it uh, the dome light. So basically the dome light is your courtesy lights. You tie everything in with that dome light and you can see we put nice quick disconnects and we have a bunch of wires just kind of all coming together right there. But they're all with the nice quick disconnect and they're all crimped together with one single terminal and all talking to each other. Not to mention we have our steering column slash I did it relay box down there already hooked up, ready to go. You really just gotta tie the starter, ignition, 
and accessory power to that box there's really nothing to it it's very simple very easy not to mention it makes it very simple with this highway 22 kit but you definitely got to terminate cut and then redo all your connections because they give you so much wire i don't like to have so much accessory wire just lying around but um here next up we have you guys is all the actual wires that are going to end up living on the other side of that dash or i should say the the firewall those are all my pins you can see we have already crimped all the individual pins onto them and those will live through that bulkhead through the firewall um we have them all pretty much ready to go there and then <clears throat> we even laced in with the quick disconnect you guys for our decoder digital turn signal and brake and even the high beams indicator so these are all the little small guys that come with the decoder digital box we have those we pre-laced them into so to speak the factory harness that talks to the turn signals and everything else that sees you sees the light basically sees the power and it's actually going to provide the signal to the dash to indicate that your turn signals are on obviously we have all our dash lights tied in together um, we have our power and ground i should say ground and power posts all hooked up here and really is tying air, all the power and grounds that we really need throughout the vehicle. We have our radio. This is our radio pigtail that comes with the retro kit. So we have a radio there and then we have another ground that's gonna piggyback to the dash. So this ground right here, um, it's split. If you can see one of them's going to that grounding post, the other one is going, gonna be going to the dash itself to ground the dash. And anything else hooked up to that so that'll be really nice but down here i want to show you guys i'm going to show you guys this organized mess if i can get these out of the way but you can see you got all the wires that basically are going to be coming from that whole basically harness up top and they're going to live and they're actually going to travel towards the back of the car that's what all this stuff is here so these are going to be all the wires that are actually going to live and talk to all the tail lights um in the back not to mention reverse lights stuff like that courtesy lights even our fuel pump we got our fuel pump going to be wired through here but we're going to end up putting a nice quick disconnect more or less right around this area so this harness can be separated from the dash so we still got to do that that's why everything's kind of not cut to length yet but what i'm going to start doing i'm going to start lacing up the harness up front and then we'll get into the bolt connector so we can do that. And this is that guy that I was telling you about. See how you got to have to put each individual wire and pin. And you definitely kind of want to make a map when you do that. So you know what number you put it into. So that way it actually talks to the correct wire on the opposite side. The last thing you want to do is put power in a ground together and they're not supposed to. And then you can really blow some stuff up <laughs> or burn some stuff up. Right. But let me get to work.
All right, fellas, so we are at this point here. So we're at the firewall. Now we have to kind of cut to length our harness here and then basically pin them all and make them more or less that length right there. We're gonna give a little bit of slack just so that way we can account for any issues or any clearances with the actual inner fender. So it gives us a little bit of room so we can kind of tuck it back there. So I gotta cut all these here to length, but we're gonna do one at a time. We're gonna pin it and then put the grommet on it or put the little uh, rubber boot and then be able to come into here. But we're gonna end up having to correspond each single one of these pins on the inside. Now this is that um, bulkhead connector I was telling you guys about. I went ahead and threw it in there but it is very important to make sure you correspond, if you're doing something like this, that each number is identical to the other side, right? We talked about that. But not only that, the pin size. The pin size is a big one as well, you guys, because if you guys don't um, crimp the correct pin on there, then it'll never mate with the other side. So I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'll do it on camera just because I can't really get the camera in here, but we'll see. All right, you guys, before we show you that bolt connector, I wanna show you kind of what the rest of this harness end up looking like. Just like that, we got our quick disconnects there. We got our turn signal, our little fuse relays up there. We're gonna have headlight, and then we got our actual fan relays. There's that little bracket I was telling you about. I gotta pull that off, get it powder coated. I might even redesign it and just get it cut out of CNC, out of actual, um, probably aluminum man eh, we'll probably keep it metal but i want to clean it up a little bit but we're going to remove that and then you follow it along all the way down there sorry about the glare you guys i'm really trying to avoid the glare for you but then they go all the way down there tuck underneath that core support so you'll never see this thing you'll ne it'll never be in the way but check out those little clips you guys see those little clips i love using these little clips they're like a zip tie push style clip man they're awesome um, one of my little tricks that I really don't talk about when I do these wiring on these cars and they're really one of my favorite things to use. Let me show you. Here it is, fellas. That's, that's the guy right there, man. I love using these things. They got a zip tie built in and they've got a push style lock as well. I love these things. I'll put a link down in the description below for them. If you guys are interested, if you guys want to use them for your project, but I don't really tell a lot of people about these, but these are definitely one of my favorites. Oh my God, you guys, that is definitely tedious. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt for sure, but the outcome is just so freaking good. You guys, look at that nice, quick disconnect. You can unplug it whenever you want. Not to mention, we got this custom little boot that's gonna go over it here. But what I'm noticing, I might've screwed up. I should've probably put this guy here and that guy on the other side. So I think what I'm going to do is I don't think I'm gonna run this guy because I don't think we need it. So let's see what this looks like with this bad boy in here. But I don't know if it's gonna get over my zip tie. I put a zip tie like right in this area. Let's see here. Let 
Now the idea is going to be, it's going to be kind of 90 like that. We already kind of know our middle point and then it's marked right there. So should be able to just go over here. I think I like that fellas check that out I mean that's what's gonna what you're gonna see on the firewall nice and clean weather protected I dig that yeah I think I'm just gonna end up cutting this one off the idea was to just kind of go over here but I don't think it needs it I really don't I think this is just fine here with this guy here I think that'll work I think I'm just gonna cut this guy off and then not worry about it because once that goes over, as a matter of fact, let's put it on first to see. Check that out, you guys. Man, that looks freaking slick, huh? That's going to look so freaking good. Now, the only thing we don't have coming out of this bolt connector is our windshield wipers, but we're going to end up doing something different. We're going to be running Detroit Speed windshield wipers, so we're going to end up going to probably drill a small hole right there for that because that's got its own harness, so we're not worried about that. But that looks freaking sharp, you guys. Tell me, you guys, what you think. Put it down in the comments below. It's a quick disconnect. So push that guy just like that. Boom, it's off. Yeah, buddy. So now we got to do is correspond that on the inside for all the wires on the inside. So the entire time I was doing this, you guys, I had my little kind of cheat sheet slash notes. Kind of where to go, what pins are what, what pins hold what gauge. So you definitely gonna need to make some kind of reference notes and stuff like that you can see I got everything written down so that way I know what pin it went into what slot and what gauge it was so that way I can take that and use it on the inside of the car man you guys I'm sweating my butt off I think that's gonna do it for this video you guys um, let me know what else you guys want to see put it down in the comments below uh, but do me a favor hit the subscribe button like button, and hit the bell for notification and you guys already know stay wrenching